Bap, bap, bap. I like, think we need to protect Richard Simmons <laughs> at, at all costs. costs. Yeah. <laughs> Do we? Put him in like what are the what are those the what are the like the seed bunkers that we need to keep society alive? It's in, case in Norway, the seed bank. Gets get Simmons in there. Put him in put his cum in there. <laughs> I mean, I just meant him. Oh, okay. I was just, it could be two kinds of seeds. We could get all the- Freeze freeze the jizz, (laughs) freeze the whole guy. I don't know what he's up for. Like if we needed to make a seed bank that was actual sperm of like great men, who would we, who would we jerk (sighs) off forcibly? Yeah. (laughs) Who do we pin down (laughs) and crank off for the good of humanity? Like we'd have to get like- Who are we going to pull start? (laughs) In the event of a total global <laughs> like, disaster. Like, set aside what you think about the person, just the fact that they, we would need, like Trump, we would need his, like he's obviously like super sperm. I picture him as a real gluey kind of guy. <laughs> you know, like, just, I, you're he, like, seems, we, he seems pretty dehydrated. Like, we, but <laughs> like a real dribbler. Apparently, allegedly, he's like had syphilis, like, if you have that kind of energy and a uh, orange skin and that kind of hair, is this uh, uh, what is it? Side effect or a, what is it called? I, mean, I don't like it either. But are we just making stuff up? Are we just like look? It's everything called... he is, it's syphilis. <laughs> I mean, apparently, what else? What's your explanation? Because <laughs> the guy is a fucking animal. Yeah, I, I do. I am curious about like the health regimen. They just keep these guys propped up at that age. It's definitely Adderall, and allegedly. Really. Do you think? And just not covered in soup. You know? I can't. I have to take three naps a day. I'm, how are these guys like going to nine cities a day, running for president, being in? On I guess uh, that. Yeah, the plane Air Force One must be real comfy. It looks pretty cozy. The good, like yeah, they're napping. They're getting yeah, good naps. yeah, yeah. That's. Hard. I want to go back to the seed farm thing because okay. I, I realize I described Donald Trump just as gluey. <laughs> and it upset me and I, I don't want to edit it out but i, I want to stop talking about that part <laughs> is is come different consistencies i'm not making accusations but i would guess that you would know better than me <laughs> not implying anything but experience level I'm just one one to one over here. I don't spend a ton of time looking at cum. Like you've definitely seen your cum way more. Mine, than, mine. And then way more. But you're, just mine. Is it different consistencies based on what you've eaten or hydration or altitude? A hydration level altitude yeah. that I haven't checked. <laughs> okay. Just... Oh man, I was in Denver. It was like it was everywhere. <laughs> I had to get it off the ceiling. Like, does it get thinner? It's the air pressure. That's what it does. Because <laughs> I feel like sometimes there's a lot and other times there's not a lot. That's the only thing I've ever noticed. I'm just looking to clean it up. I'm not really like, <laughs> I'm not really like testing it like like the pH levels like it's pool water. <laughs> I'm just like, well, we've done this again. <laughs> here's, a, here's old shame icing. Let's get that. Let's get in the shower. <laughs> Your new special like destroyed me when you were talking about. Uh, I I will spoil it. Fine, um, it's my brand. Spoiling things. Yeah. That you have to masturbate in this very special room in this new house. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> well, that sounds. <laughs> what? That's what? a great teaser to watch a special. <laughs> I, like, what is the relationship to masturbating as an adult man in a relationship? I feel like it's more work that it's worth emotionally I feel it's I like if you got like a car in storage and you know you gotta turn it on just to get the fluid <laughs> through the pipes like it feels like a formality it feels like a maintenance there, i thing. mean if we're getting there if that's where we're going with it <laughs> there is a bit of, like it i've i had thought about it. i was mixed thoughts of like is it like oh well, his boners aren't going to be around forever <laughs> you, you know real use it well you got it kind of thing is that a thing to keep I, the come up, you have to. I'm not saying it's a thing. I'm just giving you my thought process, <laughs> which is not based in any science or medical knowledge. But it's like, well, it's there. You know. Is it ever just feel Gotta masturbatory? Get... Like you're just like, I guess I should. I have like 20 minutes to kill. Yeah, all the time. That's how I am on masturbation. I'm, it's only when I'm like, I have like 20 minutes exactly to kill. <laughs> it's the only time, time it Time ever... to take 30 minutes to do this. <laughs> like, <that's laughs> time to be late for this thing. Like, How's 10 I, minutes late here? <laughs> I'm like, should I go on Instagram? Should I go on TikTok? Should I engage in the comments? No, nah, that's just toxic. And I'm like, 
<laughs> and I'm like, I have 20 that like in my mind, it's a good way to spend 20 minutes and just to yeah, make sure all the equipment's still yeah. popping. Better slap one out. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, it, it is kind of like and then there's a point where you're like, well, do I feel good that I did that? Do, was that a nice thing yeah. for myself? Like, it, oh, no, of course I don't feel good. I don't have a healthy attitude towards sex. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm now, I've, now I'm praying to a God I don't believe in anymore for forgiveness for something that's normal. <laughs> cool. I'm glad I did this again today. You talked in your new special about God not being real. I feel like everyone now, like, even if you don't believe in God, everyone's got, like, a religion, something that it checks that box, whether it's, like, their crystals, whether it's yeah. their, like, wellness, and I oh, get we up, I that, yeah. CrossFit, or, like, they've got something that's taken the place of religion. Do you have, what's your, like, religion? No, I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I think, I think, I've not to sound altruistic, but I think I feel better when I know I've like, oh, I was nice today. I was, I was like a nice person today. I wasn't a jerk. I, I'm real bad. I like shit talking way too much Ooh, and it's dude, not healthy. Let's go. Everybody, all the time. Yeah, it's, it's not let's go. good. I don't have anything Dane on Cook, deck. go. <laughs> I don't even have anything on, on deck. Joe I'm, Coy, go. <laughs> so a lot of podcasters just take on any sponsor willy nilly because they have to pay for, you know, lawyers for their DUIs and settlements from disgruntled employees. They hug too long. Not this guy. Never hugged anyone, not once. Also, I just don't take on any sponsor. Like GenuCell Skincare, I was already using this before they wanted to sponsor the podcast. Dr. Drew told me about it off camera when he did the podcast, because I asked, I asked him why he looked so young. I was like, can you give me the baby blood hookup or whatever you're doing? And he was like, it's not baby blood, sweetheart. It's GenuCell. I'm very specific about what I put on my skin. As y'all know, I make my own face oil. Double Virgo here, okay? So many products are just shit in a bottle. Let's be honest. They're scams, snake oil, trash garbage, nonsense that you overpay for that probably give you cancer, allegedly. Not GenuCell. I got obsessed with the Gen 90. It's the new instant wrinkle treatment from GenuCell. I'll even put it on my baby. I don't care. I've got my baby right here. He's starting to look old. He's a month. <laughs> I'm like, mm, we got to make sure that, you know. You don't embarrass your mom over here. We're trying to get you a Pampers campaign. Gen 90 instantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles anywhere you use it. And I mean anywhere. It made my eye... <laughs> <laughs> it made my eye wrinkles go down like right away. I think God got confused. My prayers crossed. I asked for my crows to keep leaving me tools, not for crows feet around my eyes. God's such a silly goose, isn't he? GenuCell is a natural, clean, and free from mineral oil, parabens, and harmful chemicals type of product formulated by a compounding pharmacist. It's cruelty-free. Gen 90 is on sale now at GenuCell.com, and it's, of course, included in the bestseller package. Order right now at GenuCell, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash Whitney, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash Whitney. Whitney. Free shipping on all orders. GenuCell.com slash Whitney. Love you. It's 2024. So now let's talk about something important. If you get injured by a person, place, or thing, you deserve to get paid. Life can be crazy sometimes. The other day, the parking lot uh, I was at, that sounds weird. That sounds <laughs> like I just go hang in parking lots. I don't not. Anyway, in the parking lot, do you ever just sit in a parking lot and just like contemplate your life? I do hang out. I really do. The point is, there was a homeless man. This guy runs at me with a sword, and then I went to the deli and came back after I got a weird salad, and there was this girl in a Prius, it's always a Prius, parked truly an inch from my car, okay? She had a leopard-covered seats, which is like already tells me everything I know about you, Sagittarius. And it, <laughs> so I can't get into my car because she's parked so close to me okay so first of all f you and the horse you ran it do you ride them or run them i'm really like <laughs> experimenting with a lot of very famous popular adages that i know nothing about i learned a week ago that was the elephant in the room not the elephant in the living room so i don't need any of this shit from any of you i had to crawl through my driver's side okay because this monster parks an inch away from me i almost get impaled in a very valuable place by my th thing that puts the car in park. And I know that this is not illegal. I'm just saying people are dumb and on drugs and you guys gotta protect yourself. You gotta be ready for anything in 2024. The only good news at this point is that one person's negligence can result in another's settlement. If you're in an accident, not calling a lawyer means you could be leaving money on the table, okay? When you're seriously hurt, 
your injury could be worth millions, okay? Look, I just 3D printed a human. Childbirth is hard. Hiring Morgan & Morgan is easy. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 1,000 lawyers with over $20 billion recovered for over 500,000 clients. Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting till you get your fair and full compensation. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy, okay? Having a baby, crowning alone, hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan, easy. If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash good for you or dial pound law from your cell phone. That's for F-O-R, the people dot com slash good for you or pound law pound five two nine from your cell phone this is a paid advertisement i think you're like one of the funniest comics ever get that right. i really do it you know makes what i'll me take mad. i'm trying to be better about compliments you hey, know thanks. what's weird thank you you did close your eyes so we didn't make eye contact but I, <laughs> I, I actually appreciate that part it. yeah that part by the way happen. thank you i'm um, noticing this hole in the table i'm already bit, sweating <laughs> but it's kind of like there's when you're a comic and you watch other people do comedy there's like that's funny. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, that's funny. You know that's a good joke. You know, oh, that's funny. Yeah. And then the next level is like jealousy. You're like, yeah. oh, that's I'll never be that good. And yeah. then there's comedy that actually makes a comic be a fan of comedy and yeah. just get to be like someone in the audience. Yeah. And watching your last special, I was just like a person watching comedy. Oh, that, that, that means a lot. Thank you. That's the yeah. nicest thing I've ever said to anyone. No, it, even if it sounds weird because of my personality and voice. No, I even if it sounds weird because of everything about I, mean, I know me it sounds like I'm gaslighting you. No, I, I know what you mean, though. You like you forget that this is like, oh, I'm, I'm just being entertained. Like the people sitting in the audience. Yep. Honestly, moving to Portland has been one of the best because now I go and I, I don't watch comedy specials on TV. I'm a little worried. I'm, like, first off, I see enough comedy. I'm a little worried about the osmosis of consuming it in the background at home or something. Interesting, because you it, worry it'll affect yeah, how you so think. Yeah, so at least I can like have some plausible deniability as to like the the, the originality of the stuff that's coming out. But, it shows because I mean, people say like he's West Coast to tell, like this, what you know, like just in terms of how much everybody loves you and you. I'm uh, not. Yeah, I was gonna like not 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 on the humor level. No, Nobody's no, no. touching that guy. What's your problem? Do you like write jokes and then start to see connections and callbacks and story starts just getting bigger as you tell them, or do you yeah. write everything? Well, out? I mean, you like you know when you're like, oh, I'm about to repeat this story because this group hasn't heard it yet. Yeah. yeah. I'll spice it up a little more from last time. Make it fun for me. You know? Oh yeah, yeah. And then you start doing that, and all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I'm telling the same bullshit story for. 30 minutes instead of 10 minutes because yeah. you found this detail. It's funny. You're like, <laughs> oh, if I go off on this, I had this joke about the gr the grocery store, but I saw a brand of something I bought once when I was a kid and a crazy thing. Like you start adding all that stuff onto it. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, it, I think it's just, you do comedy long enough that you start. It's yeah, not, I don't, yeah, I'm yeah. not saying it's healthy. Yeah, yeah. Like processing everything like, oh, that'll be this. It'll turn into this. Does like, it ever turn off in your head? It's always kind of in the back of your mind. Yeah, I just got a lot better about writing notes so I could not worry about forgetting things. Yeah. Because my memory went to absolute shit. What is that? <laughs> is that new? Is that all of us? Was it COVID? Was it was it was not it... having to check in with the world for a few years? <laughs> was it COVID? Was it us looking at our screens all day and frying our brains? Was it we've taken in so much information that we expect to actually retain all of it when we never were designed for that? Like everyone I know is like, I can't remember shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was wondering, like, pardon me, I thought it was just age. Like, okay, now we got enough experience to like I I'm like hoarding memories. <laughs> like, what, I have to have the, the trinkets that remind me of the thing around me. Like, give it a rest, dude. It's fine. Yeah, you know you went to Disneyland when you were seven. Let it go. <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> like you like collect things that like you can't throw. Stuff no, out. I do. I do have like, I'm not full hoarder, but there's certain things that. I like a, a in this associate. room coming after hoarders would be a big well, big swing. I, I was kind of like I'm like looking at it. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of details in here, but it, it's also a set. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's for. But it's in my home. This is my. I do sleep in. There's a horse thing going on. Yeah, <laughs> but it's like you can't. There's something that happens. I don't know if it's like terror management theory, like which is like the idea that we know that we're gonna die, so we have to start collecting things to feel a sense of permanence or something. You cheer for teams. You pick a play like some to make you feel 
like you're not going to die or like will have some kind of lasting effect. Who knows? That's why people like like trophies and plaques and family crests and shit like that. There's a point where you're just like, I have six horse things. Like, I mean, I also have OCD, but I'm like, no, I, well, I, I have to have this one. So this one like has a friend and then it just turns into like, I can't not buy it. It's like guys looking at butts. You're just like, let me just, I know I'm going to look, I have to just look at it and then I can stop looking at it. Is that what it is? Hor vintage horse stuff for me is like guys looking at women's butts. It's not like, it's, sure. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You're just like, there it is. Moving on. Right. You know what I mean? I'm trying to think if that's how I look at butts. <laughs> you, well, you live in Portland. All the check women are like lesbians check. in burlap. Like everybody's overalls. got everybody's got butts. Everyone in Portland just like dresses like a, a janitor in a Broadway play for no reason. Or, like will... a fisherman. <laughs> I like how the Broadway play <laughs> went. Like, it could stop at janitor, but like, but there's theatrics to it. I'm like, all right. There is. You're kind of like that's a brand new pair of aged vintage jeans. I think there there is that. There's the stereotypes of it, but then there's also just it's a city. It's got everything you. You spent a lot of time defending Portland. I feel like yeah. I just bought a house there. I got. I, got, I've, I've, I made myself a permanent part of the community. I got to be on board. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we're in LA. At least the butts are real up there. I was like in Venice yesterday. I saw a woman that was shaped. I'm like, you're anime. You're not real. What is that? You're you're a hologram. <laughs> it's a it's a well shaped hologram, but not nothing about you looks like you are comfortable with what you've done to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like the, all the women I feel like look the same to me. I don't know if it's the contouring makeup or what it is. Oh yeah, the contouring and the stuff. bodies. Like I don't know. I have fake boobs. My fa but. is well. I mean, again, I've got stupid tattoos, but I, they made me feel better when I got them. Can if I it makes you feel better to get it, then feel better. I do not think I could ever date a guy without tattoos. Oh really? Mm -hmm. I look at somebody without tattoos now. I'm like, wow, you made it. <laughs> Good job. My problem People are like, I'm going to get my first tattoo. Like, what's, why? <laughs> Let me show you what's going to happen. I just, I feel like if I see a guy without tattoos, my brain is just like, do you not care, believe in anything? Like, do you, like, you I think they believe in themselves. I, I think is what's going on with somebody without tattoos. Like, oh, I actually like who I am well enough to not ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> tattoos are like fucking a, a old dog you don't like that won't die. Like this is just around now. I gotta get used to this thing. I love what. <laughs> why, which ones don't you like? They're all stupid. I like the palm trees. That was uh, an alien landing on the beach. I love that it's a UFO. This is a it's a grim reaper. It says party pooper. <laughs> And it's, that's a cover-up, because I thought the other tattoo was dumb. <laughs> what was the other one? It was a clock with wings, <laughs> which I got when I was 20. Because time flies. Get it? It was like, <laughs> may as well just get popsicle stick jokes tattooed all over. This one says, whoops. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's good good conversation i got started. that that's an old one too man and then are they all over you or just your uh, arms? arms and then uh, i got my one leg with a bunch of silly what i got like jesus with bob seeger lyrics oh that's cool rambling gambling man i did a i put a pentagram underneath that because i had to balance uh, god and devil shit and then... <laughs> i got I got the pig from uh, from the Pork Chop Express from Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> Shut the fuck. It says kind of invincible underneath it. <laughs> or over it. I don't remember. I don't look at them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't check in on them. <laughs> and, like, how did you, like, wh how old were you when you got, like, what was the process of going through that? Because there's all these uh, tattoos that I want, and I'm kind of like, I get, like, 70% there. And I'm curious the other 30%. That... This is why I got, I got in trouble for saying this. A while ago, I think I was on Hot Ones, and it was before Anthony Bourdain took took an exit. <laughs> and I was yeah, yeah. I was talking about his tattoos. I'm like, he got them all within like one year, like a new Suicide Girl. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> that joke didn't age well, or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> but yeah, when you see somebody gets one, and then within like 18 months, they're just got it done. Like, there's nothing interesting about like. A themed sleeve. <laughs> like, all it says, like, good, you could sit still for a while. Like, I want to see individual, like, oh, this is what I got with my buddy, and we were doing this, and then this one, I, man, that was a crazy night. Like, that's the story I'd rather see with the tattoos and something silly and funny. I do like somebody that, like, oh, they didn't take it too seriously. But they're like, it's the universe? Sure it is, dude. That's the arm you beat off with. Who cares? Sick. 
<laughs> yeah, I guess I just I feel kind of like not having I have white tattoos and then I have like one or two over here, but I feel very what, um you have white tattoos? Yeah, they use white ink. So oh. see right there, so that like it's kind of a non-committal. It just sums me up in a nutshell. It's just like a, a tattoo, but not at all. Poser. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I I don't want to commit Does to it. Does it stay? It's just for me. I see it because oh, it look, kind of looks like a scar. Did it it hurts with the ten times as much, and no one can see it. Does it hurt, hurt worse than hitting your arm on that chair? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I did it over here too, <laughs> and I think I was able to. I think it's when you closed your eyes because we had a real moment. Okay. And I was like, "Fuck, I I don't know why I'm struggling with this chair. I think I'm nervous around you." <laughs> I don't know why I'm the <laughs> least. <laughs> no, I put my thing <laughs> arm here, and I missed it. <laughs> And I turn it into like I'm just gonna be this person that's like swaying. No, I'm, I'm actually cool. I'm actually just really cool. <laughs> I'm obsessed with. Um, I never know if I'm gonna get along with someone who has a cat. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Not. I I would love to understand cat. I would love to have cats. I I'm fascinated by them. I just I think they're like haunted, and I'm too insecure <laughs> to have them because they make me feel bad about myself. I think that says more about you than the no, cat. Uh, no, I, I think that the cat. Absolutely. I don't think that's the intention of the cat. <laughs> you don't. You know, cats. If you die, they will eat your face within 24 hours. I uh, know. I was at a house where there was a cat that was rescued from a house that the previous owner had taken an exit. Okay. <laughs> and I woke up with the cat sitting on my chest while I was sleeping. Knowing that that cat maybe had already gotten a taste for something. <laughs> that how did you get the cat? It was I was staying at a friend's house, uh, and so was, the, the cat was at my, at the friend's house. Like, do you remember? I don't remember if it. Was, and I love cats, so I'm like I'm on board. with Tales them. from the Dark Side or Tales from the Crypt? Did you ever watch that? Tales from the Crypt, the Nine Lives episode. The episode where the cat follows Joe the man Pantoliano. around. Well, oh. oh no no! This is a different one. Tell me the one you're going to talk about because I'm oh I'm psyched to talk about this. Where now. the cat follows him and follows him and fo and stalks him and then it goes into his mouth and kills him by going into his stomach. Oh, that's a crazier one than I was thinking. Oh, what's yours? The one I was thinking was a Tales from the Crypt, <clears throat> and uh, so Joe Pantaleon is like a he's like a homeless like a hobo, and so this this uh, doctor gets a hold of him. He's like, I'm going to give you this much money for an experimental surgery. I'm going to take the organ that comes out of the, the thing that gives a cat nine lives. I'm going to take it out of the cat and I'm going to put it into you. And he's like a, a hobo, a drunk guy on the street. He's like, oh, why not? And so he does that and he enters the circus. And so in the circus, his thing is that he will die. He knows he has nine times that he can die. And he makes all this money dying in different way, like in the circus way. Like the guy oh, shoots no. him with an arrow or oh, something. No. Oh, and no. so his final trick as he's getting buried alive, and he's telling the whole story from being uh, in a gra in a grave underground. And he, the end of the story, is he goes, "And all I got all this fame because he winds up turning on the scientist or the doctor, and he goes, and I got all this just from that one cat that gave his life. And then he realized that the cat had to die once, so he didn't do the math correctly. So he was actually get this was the tenth time he was going to die, and he was going to die." <laughs> buried in the ground and he realized that in the ground and now i thought that was the coolest thing i'd ever like <laughs> this is what all entertainment should be this is a twist ending it was kind of funny it's scary joe pantalanos he's a fun little weird guy like it was everything i wanted in a in a tv show Chef's when i was kids. a little kid yeah i was like eight years old i'm like well this is the top of entertainment and nothing <laughs> nothing's gonna beat this i don't even know why you got the oscars if this is out this is a thing you're done <laughs> we're done you guys can pack up and go home a platoon take oh. a hike who needs it? this guy <laughs> the cat died. The cat died once, and they didn't do the math. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> Twist endings, and like, get out of here. I feel like a lot of comics watched a lot of horror coming up. Yeah, I got. I definitely got erased by cable. Like we got cable, mm -hmm. like like good cable. Also, do you early. have siblings? Yeah, I have a sister. Older, younger? Younger. Okay. Not by much, like a year and a half. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, so I had a much older brother, so mm -hmm. I saw way older stuff, and there was nothing my parents could really do about it, so I feel like I saw horrific stuff like way too early. What was the scariest thing you saw that you can remember seeing at a young age? Okay, there was a, again, Tales from the Dark Side or Tales from the Crypt. Pat, mm -hmm. I just sent you, texted you the video of a different one. This was a recurring one where the cat would go into people's mouths. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I also love that former... 
horror movies are now comedies because the special effects are so bad and because it's just like a weird puppet. Or yeah, something. we kind of have a good time with them. It's just they're so funny now. There That's was- what metalheads were good for because metalheads knew that early on. That's so true. Like, what are you scared? It's hilarious. Look how fake that is. <laughs> yeah, it's like, totally no, so. thank you, metalheads, for making me not afraid of monsters. <laughs> Wait, so he's a att- wait, the cat's now attacking the woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, this is hilarious. <laughs> it's, it's so good. It's so good. Dude, it's so good. Because you know the actor had to sit there with the fake cat on their face, just like, are we good? Are the light are the lights good? But I also love the person that was like, We got it. We can go yeah, yeah. home. Like you got it? Did you? Guys, I can't breathe in this thing. We got I got I got maybe two, three takes in me, but I can't. This thing is so was this a real taxidermized cat? Uh, yeah. Do we need to I'm, use... aller- I'm actually allergic. So this is, there is an element of fear that I'm bringing to the table on this. But like, <laughs> there there was another one where the cat goes into the person's mouth. Like light coming out of it? Oh, maybe. Will you see if that's a thing? I think it was Tales from the Dark Side. There was another one called Tales from the Crypt. If a horror movie yeah. makes you afraid of water, fuck you, Ooh. dude. So it was a blob that- That was Tales from the Crypt part two. And oh, no, was, I'm sorry. That is creep show. Ooh, it was a lake. Was, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the blob you know, was in the lake. That is, uh, I believe, the second creep show. You know movie. when teenagers <clears throat> are going to a lake, uh-huh. something bad's going to happen. Never works out. They go <laughs> They go out, and there's like a floating wood thing, and they're yeah. all on it, and they're Enjoy hot. that hand job. It's yeah, the last right. you're ever going to get. <laughs> and then, so one gets sucked in, and then it turns into like bones. Mm-hmm. Remember? And then one girl finally gets away, and she yep. like lays down on the beach to like... <gasps> I escaped mm-hmm. the thing, and then it rises up on top of her. Yep, that I, I believe that is uh, the second creep show movie. The first creep show movie, I would bet, I can't find it. There's a licensing thing, like I gotta go get the actual VHS from somewhere. I would bet that that would still scare the living shit out of me. The I first bet. one, because that bet. was all the vignettes, and it that's was, exactly what it was. That's the old guy from Christmas Vacation. Okay, is it? <laughs> okay, I might have the one. Look at him. Tell tell me this cat comes out of the mouth. Out. Yeah, look at him. Out. Look at him go. Look at this little guy. Look at this little guy. Still adorable. Still adorable to me. (laughs) Look at how cute this guy is. Look at that. Good (laughs) job. That's who gets an award. You give. Listen, we already got the puppy bowl. Where are the animals? Look, it's trying Oscars? to go in his mouth. It's trying to go and watch. Get in there. Watch, watch. Come on. No. Come on. No. (laughs) No. Get him. Get him. Come on. What's he trying to do? Oh, he's he's just giving him the hex. He's try- okay, now he's he just... He couldn't take his medicines. Oh. Oh, he got him. Wait, something... The cat has something else up his sleeve. I have tell you that right now. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Get that cat an award. <laughs> Give that cat an Emmy. I hate you. I didn't realize ever... I don't remember everyone being in a wheelchair in this in this show, <laughs> but going back... I guess this was a recurring theme. Cat's got your tongue. 1990. That's what it's called? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the whole movie. <laughs> All right. Well, now I got something to do tonight. Oh, this is the one. Oh, this is it. This is it. Traumatic. I no. can't. We had cats in the house, and I was just like, I still think this is. It, it follows him, him around. Go. Look at him go. It follows him around the whole movie. <laughs> oh, get in there. Oh, he's like. I mean, he... he's like trying to eat a seven later burrito. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. Look at the tail wagon. And the cat. Oh! <laughs> Still blinking. I. <laughs> why? <laughs> like, why was the. Oh, the tail again. There he goes. There he goes. Can <laughs> I come up at the end? The scariest part. Blast to the logo. Get to the logo. I, I, I watched that on a loop as a, I don't know, six, seven year old. Yeah. 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 Is that why cat, I'm scared of cats? I mean, help me. I, I guess. I'm, well, I'm trying to think of like if anything traumatized me to the point where it affected me later in life. I just, I, I where, just want to be a cat person, and I. American Werewolf in London. Mm. For, I've low lying fog. You ever see a field where like the fog just comes up to your chest? Yeah, in Portland, where you live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. But... Yeah, fog is dicey because like what's under there. I legit, we would get stoned in in suburban chicagoland and we were like we're driving to the mississippi <laughs> just we were real bored kids <laughs> and the mississippi's like three and a half hours so we'd make it about a half hour to the fox river and we're like good enough 
off. <laughs> but I remember we pulled off in some farmland to turn around and I had to pee. And I went out into the farmland and I was like, I'm just high and giggly. But then I started thinking about American Werewolf in London and pants around my ankles ran back to the car with piss all over myself. <laughs> and I just got in the car and was like, what happened? I'm like, I can't even start with you guys. Let's just go home. It's late. <laughs> like, yeah. So I didn't pee. I peed on myself. I was already, but that I remember that movie affected me. And that is a comedy. That is billed as a comedy. Yeah, totally. But as the scary parts in that were scary. I think I also, uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory did a number on me. Um, I must say, because yeah. there was a lot of, like the kid that got stuck in the tube. Oh, that's just a good claustrophobia for Totally. Out. Yeah. Like sl water slides for a minute. Like I always thought about that scene where he was like, you know, because none of those kids should have survived what no. happened to them in that movie. No. But because movie magic. But um, yeah, I, that always stressed me out when I would see like water slides and stuff. I couldn't. That was in the same era. Like I grew up like the baby Jessica was a big thing. Hmm. Remember that when the baby fell in the, in the documentary well? Documentary about no, it was like just a real. It was a <laughs> it was a real life event where this baby fell in a oh, well. Oh God! And uh, yeah, that's this, not it. Oh, but <laughs> that's, I hated that. I hated that scene. God, Gene Wilder just like wow, these kids are dying. They're Crazy. Well, <laughs> apparently when we were watching it as a kid, we were like, but like, but the commentary. I watched it recently again. Well, over the pandemic, it was like mm -hmm. we had three years to just waste our lives and i started re-watching all the stuff we watched when we were kids just to like see what just happened. to re-terrorize yeah, yourself just, you know, just to do forensics <laughs> on like what went wrong um and uh that i read about it it's like a commentary on parents not disciplining their kids well i mean i got that from when i was a kid i didn't <laughs> really my nope. parents were like see what happens when you didn't listen to your parents <laughs> see, these are all spoiled brats look, look what's happening to them well see i watched it alone at a stranger's house so oh. no one explained it to me well that's how i watched the shining for the first time Shit. when i was about 10 years old and i was i was starting it <laughs> i was sitting in my kitchen and it was at night and i'm starting it my mom goes the shining oh that's a scary one and then she went to bed. <laughs> she, just, <laughs> she just let me. But she loves scary movies. And yeah. I think she know, like, it's why, like, all the true crime stuff now, I'm like, I, I don't know what, why it's blown up. And people are like, it's soothes people that are anxious. Yeah. Because maybe it's saying, like, yeah, you're not just anxious for no reason. Yeah. There is terrible stuff in the world that you can kind of observe from a distance with these podcasts or everything. Like, I, I mean, I am a little at odds with how much money is made off of a witty retelling of an actual heinous crime. Yeah, with yeah, totally. Things. But it is also, the, that's the justification for it. Is that it's like leveling off like people at anxiety of like, well, things are crazy out there and I'm not being paranoid. The world's nuts as long as it doesn't, you know, make you a shut in, I guess. Two things I wonder about that. One thing I heard about how like at least women love um, true crime so much because it's like yeah. researching what could happen to you. It's like yeah. uh, uh, rubbernecking. We do it to like go like what went wrong so we don't do that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. we're sort of magnetically looking at it. And then also the other thing about true crime, is it like the like modern day Roman Colosseum? I mean, humans three, 400 years ago used to go to an auditorium and just watch people get torn apart yeah. by like elephants. Yeah. I think it was more tigers. The elephants were more bigger. I was going to say I, tigers, but yeah. that's what everyone says. And they did use elephants. They would have fights they, where like a tiger would fight an elephant for like 12 hours. You know what made me laugh the most? I went to the Colosseum in Rome and mm -hmm. they would talk about how they wouldn't know what animal it was going to be. Like, cause it would pop up from the ground. The and, audience and, wouldn't. Yeah, and what if you're just like, <laughs> baby goats? <laughs> like, <laughs> now you have to kill them. Like, there's no win for them, cause oh, like then shit. they have to slay like nothing but puppies, cause it's them. <laughs> like well, only one entity can leave alive. <laughs> but then everybody hates them, cause the guy had to kill a bunch of puppies. <laughs> He's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let them eat. Let them eat me. I don't want this on my shoulders. I don't want this blood on my hands. <laughs> let them slowly nibble me to death. Like, yeah, yeah. I just go? something. I don't. I'm not gonna be that guy. I'm it's not gonna be the like they tell you like they're like they would you know like i just you know i rescue horses mm -hmm. so you know i grew up around horses so it's like they're, they're like oh they used to tie 
a horse to each arm, leg, 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 and then it would oh, tear a person apart. Drawn and quartered. Horses don't do that. They don't run that way. They all run together. Like it was Sam Harris did an episode about this. It was so much worse. Like they were like, okay, we're going to tie a horse to the ankles and the wrists and they're all just going to run. They're going to do what we want them to do. It doesn't happen. They all stood there weird. There's just a writer's room of figuring out how to torture somebody like, all right. Yeah. See, that wasn't the horses wouldn't. That never worked that way. There's no way it worked like that. I mean, if they just kept whip, whipping the horses, I guess they could have done that. But all horses, usually a herd will follow one horse. The guy in the middle is like, I mean, I'm uncomfortable. Don't get me wrong. But it's really not. I mean, I don't know. If, like, he if was the goal is to get me pulled apart, I'm just. He probably got trampled by two that were going one direction and just like did yoga to death. Uh, all right, guys, back to the drawing board. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> four horses weren't it. I think maybe two. Maybe Wait, is, we tried maybe two. Maybe if he's allergic to horses, we might <laughs> we might have a funny death on our hands. I mean, he was sneezing a lot before, you know, the one leg went off and Annette took his attention. There's apparently someone that was always standing by just to kill the person if it was taking too long. <laughs> How humane of them. <laughs> Which is like, how do you get that job and who decides it's time to call it? It's like giving someone the light when they're dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just like, this is bombing. Like, just we, put I got a thing at 2.30, so. <laughs> I, here's something. We could just kill him from the get-go. We got, <laughs> we got the guys doing the hood with the axe. He's doing a great job. People love it. They come out to the, they come and watch it. I went to a, when I was little, we went to a, Europe on vacation. I remember it was in Germany, and bef it was before Whoa. every city. Can I just my, ask how that happens? My dad worked f works for the airlines, or worked oh, for the airlines, cool. and so yeah, we were like not rich, but had flight benefits. Yeah, and so that's it was like, awesome. I got to like go to cool places, and I was thankful for that. So we're in Germany, and we went to the torture museum because this. You know, how old are you? I, was, I think I was like third grade or fourth grade. <laughs> It's funny Listen, because you my did... parents are good people. I don't like, want this to reflect on them. No, I just I'm trying to figure out how you got so funny with loving parents, and I think we figured it out. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's like it's interesting. Yeah. But then I, that's you talking about things you remember because now every city kind of has one, and I think I heard that a lot of these might be fictionalized. I don't know. I feel like the Germans portrait. went pretty hard. Well, I remember seeing the Iron Maiden. Is that what is that? Is that the thing with all the spikes? Yeah, that's that. But the one I remember the most is how they said they would like take a wheel, like a wagon wheel, and like pulverize somebody with it and then weave them in between the spokes. Jesus. <laughs> this is what I, this is what I took. I'm still shitty at uh, multiplication. Times <laughs> tables don't remember those. <laughs> but they would weave the the, the, the pulverized. But yeah, there you go. That's the one. There it is. Yeah, like that. Wait, would, so how yeah. does this pulverize? Expense? No, they, oh, maybe this is something else. They just twirled them or something. I don't know. <laughs> they just nauseated them to death. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm not a big fan of the merry-go-rounds. That this is it. oh, this person is that someone that had to suck a shit <laughs> out of a pig? Maybe he, maybe he's blowing into it. Oh, bummer. <laughs> well, now the, is the pig eaten or is the pig? That's like the first human centipede. I knew it. As a little human kebab. Does this? This guy's holding a ring up. He's proposing. He's like, <laughs> you're the kind of freak I've been looking for, man. Uh, and now listen, the, the, the traditionalists are going to frown on this, but I think you're, I think you're the fella for me. <laughs> I guess. Does this bum you out that humans are capable of this? Like this wasn't that long ago. It, I mean, does that bum me out, or the fact that there's a museum now to be like, hey, check it out? Like we could forget about it. <laughs> actually wait uh, i want that horse statue um yeah that's, I think they did i don't think that's a horse statue what's weird <laughs> i think something else was going on with that what's worse <clears throat> that humans actually tortured other humans or that other humans were like let's make a museum out of this or that people actually showed up with their children i don't know are they all can they all just be bad can they all just be a bad thing i mean is it worse that there's probably still people getting tortured now but we're like well turn society's taking a different angle on it <laughs> yeah, so it's true. no more public hangings i guess <laughs> but we do like public shamings on twitter like when people get canceled isn't that just like a public shaming uh, that, that, I mean, the can like is any nobody's canceled. No one's can. One hundred percent. Nobody's canceled. I'm totally with you. But but, is it, but but to join in and mock. Isn't mock that why somebody? people try? It's kind of like we're doing. We're, it's like a mob. Do you? 
I'm getting to a point now where like I you know I'm like oh begrudgingly participating in social media because of comedy and everything. Yeah, and yeah. like more and more I think there's like a general malaise towards it. Like like I think maybe like uh, there's a, an amount of people like why am I looking at this? Why am I getting mad? Like there's like a general feeling of like yeah, I got the account. I look at it once in a while and I think that's such a good thing. Yeah. I think it's a really really good thing that people yeah. like yeah, I don't like you see somebody hasn't posted in like 3 months like good for yeah that's awesome <laughs> like like jeselnik i'm like mm -hmm. weirdly starstruck by him because i've known him for we started around the same almost 20 years but he didn't post on social media for like four years and then i got like yeah. nervous around him because i was like starstruck by his restraint yeah or I, I just thought he was better than me i don't know anything about you how am i <laughs> yeah, supposed to hang out i was out? like so uncomfortable and like weird like I, like i had a crush on him or something just because i it mean was, who like, doesn't you're though. so mysterious yeah and he's also like a bad boy you know <laughs> and also like you don't give a fuck like yeah. you're a comic yeah, but you don't cool. he's, he's like cool i'm guy. funny enough to not need to do that he just like God. made me have to look in the mirror so Jealous. I know. It's so cool. I'm like, so you're just like secure with yourself without yeah. likes. Yeah, you're the you're the bad boy. You're exactly that guy in a high school, like leather jacket. Totally. Oh. You're not even going to the dance. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll show up. Cigarette. Like, whoa, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> That's totally what it was. I, was I want to like, be like that so much, except I'm this guy. Like, I hope you come to my show. <laughs> Swipe up for check out. Fucking carrot stick in my beard. Like, uh, do you like me? I guess I don't care. I don't like me either. Um, so you're <laughs> you're from Chicago. I love that you shot your special in Minneapolis, right? Yeah, at Acme, yeah. And then, okay, I'm obsessed with this. The older you get, the more you become where you're from. The more you're from where mm. you're from. Yeah. I don't know what that even, it just, there's, so, I started putting butter out. Like in the South, you put the butter out. It's just out. Like room temperature. You don't put it in the fridge. But is it the butter dome? What do they call it? It's butter in bell? a dish. Butter dish. It's in oh, a you, dish. Oh, you're not doing the bell? It's a, it's a square, it's an Etsy vintage. It's got. But you know the bell, right? I, with the handle? Yeah, but it goes in water. So there's not air getting to the butter. But it's still out at room temperature. Okay, this I'm listening. What are you talking about? Now this is not what I thought would happen today. <laughs> the that, butter bell. Well, that we'd go from gluey jizz to like <laughs> you know, you're using a butter bell, <laughs> which sounds like a cure for gluey jizz. But it's you have mother, you're... see it goes in the water, so the bacteria is not getting to the butter because it's sealed by the water. Is this a Midwest thing? I just found out about it a couple years ago. How, where? Somebody had it, and I was, like, weirded out by it. I've never heard of this. Yeah. This is wild. So but the then, water, oh. So there's a little bit of water in there. And, and the so water, there's not air coming into contact with your butter, but it's still room temperature. But water can be carry germs. I mean, listen, if you want to pick it apart, pick it <laughs> apart. But... I'm just this saying. Is, I don't know if this is. Can we? Is this, yeah, you don't put your hand in the water. Is this a sh Is this a you Don't fill it up with a toilet. It's, this, it's, it's a small dish of water. Is this? But well, what is the point? Is it really old or really new? I can't tell. Is this an old time Renaissance thing? Did you get this at the gift shop of the torture museum? <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard of this. Oh, People watching public torture loved a nice uh, croissant. Users and, uh, who bought these tickets also there's bought. A lot, you know, there's a plague in the air, so you keep the butter in the water. So perfect, that's why. Keeps the butter at perfect spreading consistency. The anatomy of a mm, butter bell. Spreading crop. consistency. Huh. Huh. Yeah. No, I do. I put it out. And I just okay. recently started doing it. I recently started after you cook bacon or grease, you put it in a cup and it just stays oh, on your yeah. sink. For old just, yeah, old coffee can. Oh, yeah. Just grease is just always kind of there. Because it can't go down the sink. Nope. Selling a little or a lot, Shopify helps you do your thing however you cha-ching. <laughs> Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business from the launch, your online shop stage to the first, sorry, this is my baby, which I might, um, look, we'll see which option ShopBop has for, is there an adoption section? Uh, and then it'll take you all the way to the real life store stage. All the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're selling scented soap or trinkets or doodads and bits 
or spooky tchotchkes, Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one commerce platform to their in-person POS system wherever and whatever you're selling. Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36%. Better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less, less effort. Thanks to Shopify, magic, your AI powered all-star. For me, it's all about a real connection with your customers. Like if you can reach out to them, know where they're from, see a list of where in the USA they are, you can start getting a real understanding of why people buy and why your next round of product will be even more dialed in. Like I like to, like on Shopify, you can see where everyone who, <laughs> who bought, in my case, my book. So I was able to then customize my tour schedule and go see those people and go do stand up so I could sign their books in person. Slam dunk. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the US and Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklyn, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus Shopify, countries that was plural and you know it. Plus Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way because businesses that grow, they grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash Whitney, all lowercase. Please don't be an uppercase weirdo. Go to shopify.com slash Whitney now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash Whitney. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Look, when a new year rolls around, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. There are some things that I would like to change. Like I would ideally like to change being so absent-minded that I send a text about someone to the person it's about. Not great. Don't love it. Okay. Love to maybe stop Googling Hitler in 2024. Not my favorite thing about myself. What I do want to double down on that I'm already doing right is therapy. Not speech therapy, as you can tell. <laughs> Mind therapy. Therapy helps you find your strengths so that you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. They stick just about as much as this baby's puke has stuck to my nipple today. I go to therapy. Okay, you know this about me, I'm open about this, and when I stopped going to therapy for six months, guess what happened? I suddenly had blue hair. Google it. Therapy helps me get my internal needs met internally instead of going outside myself to alcohol, drugs, online shopping, Instagram, you name it, I've used it to avoid looking at myself. Therapy helps me stay present instead of disassociating through life. Because that's yucky, folks. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. That's what they say it in, in England. Schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists any time, any, literally any time, for literally no additional charge. Okay? Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Whitney today. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Dot com slash Whitney. What are like some Midwestern things that you only see in the Midwest? Because that's the one part of the country I don't. <clears throat> I'm trying, like, I feel like I get more of an accent. I don't think I have that much of an accent, but mm -hmm. I think it comes out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I also go back a lot. Yeah. I'm back there pretty often. This is the best place to tour. I mean, it's, I mean, it rules. I'm trying to think of like anything that's like, I think it's more of just a, I, mean, I talk about it in the special, just the general attitude of life and self help of like, yeah, things aren't going to be good. <laughs> like, you know, like it's life. Life's yeah. not good. Yeah. But you know, it's not good. So you're like, all right, like good enough. Yeah. Like you just set the bar at good enough. And if anything blips over the bar, you're like, yeah. I'm grateful for this, but it also cannot stay because if it stays, like I have this uh, idea that luck is a finite amount, like a karmic. Kind of like if something good happens, something bad has to happen. Sure. Uh, but then if something bad happens, like, well, I probably deserved it. <laughs> so I know this like, is true. This balance. I feel this to be true. Something good happens, and then it's just like waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's like yeah. What's... And, and so there's this weird, like, this this kind of internal struggle of like, you know, everybody's always comics are always going to be jealous, and they're always going to be like, well, that so and so got that thing, so and so's getting this. Sure. But then I have to temper that with, like. But look what you have. And so I, it, in that way, I think it's good. It keeps me humble. And the whole thing of like, 
Even if it's like false humility of like, oh, thanks. I can't but you know what you get? I get enough compliments get. because I'm not big enough to be torn down yet. I'm like, leave it alone. <laughs> leave it here. Consistently give me a B plus. That's all I want. I we're, not getting like... into, we're not getting into a good college. We're going to a state school, but with baby, maybe they'll give us a couple bucks. That's all we need. It's all we need. It's always like stay an underdog. As yeah. soon as you win too hard, it's like the clock people, starts. People want to take you down. Uh huh. Like, oh no, I'm in that sweet spot. So that's what, like keeps me. I'm like, what a weird, sick attitude of like, I don't want to get nope, too nope. successful because mm -mm. then that that's a reason for people to not like me. It's, like, what kind of fucked up thinking is that? I would like to just stay <laughs> out of Cat Williams's purview. <laughs> I would like to just stay out of his wrath. If Cat Williams is talking about me, <laughs> I have made it. <laughs> I just know that whatever he were to say about me would be correct <laughs> and I would not be able to handle it. <laughs> I don't. Have you interacted with Cat Williams? I wrote on the roast of Flavor Flav, which okay. he hosted. So okay. I wrote a lot of the jokes uh, for that roast that he, that were about him, uh, okay. but I didn't mean it. <laughs> and you're the funniest and I'm on your side and I'm sorry. I love Cat. I love that guy, dude. That was, everyone's like, it's interesting because I do think if you are at a point where you're fearless and talking shit about successful people and talking mm -hmm. shit about Hollywood, everyone just assumes you're on drugs. May I don't know. I have no idea. He didn't seem on drugs to me. But then again, everyone thinks I'm on drugs. I didn't watch that interview either. I what? Just, again, I just hear about things from people. Oh, it's... At, can we play some of it? I mean, so, so I gotta watch Tales from the Dark Side and the Cat Williams interview. I, th I, I think I watched like I think I watched a couple snippets of it. Dude, it is spectacular. It is... The guy showed up to entertain like there's a lot of i mean sometimes podcasts included you're like i guess it's like a casual hang i have a hard time with this sometimes i'm like the joke yeah. and joke we have to do something like yeah. chew up a clip like i just sort of have a hard time believing people want to hear us just like shoot the shit that's I, a big like how disposable everything is like, yeah but people another, but do they, listen to i know it. and i forget that part and i'm like oh people do like just because we hate ourselves doesn't mean everyone <laughs> else does like everyone else likes us a little more than we like ourselves that's okay you want to talk about influences cat williams influences me not in a manner of like joke writing let's just say my material is not gonna overlap with his so much <laughs> But as far as like showing up to entertain, like where you watch how many comics, especially like, so I think my heyday or like when I kind of popped was the aughts. Really? And it was the height of like the alternative, like stand up and the jokes are the star of the show. So there's no performance. I'm just going to tell you these observations and seeing Cat Williams use a whole stage and roll out and like a $50,000 belt buckle <laughs> yeah. and a $2,000 hair quaff and uh -huh. within five minutes just be a sweating mess sweating. who's like sliding into first base yeah. back and forth. <laughs> That's I'm like, right. That's a show. I need to be, there's no reason you can't also like be a comedian, but like put on a show. People put on came a show. out. People came out. Act like hey. you're excited to be there. Hey, maybe don't lean on the brick wall. Come yeah. off the brick wall. Yeah, I'm you gonna move stand. around a little bit because mm -hmm. I, I, I was like, I move a little bit, and I'd watch a video of myself. I'm like, that's a cardboard cutout of you. <laughs> you could tell the jokes from behind the curtain if you wanted to. <laughs> and so that, like, watching that, like, oh, he's gonna give them their money's worth. Yeah, that's it. And that was like a big influence, like to watch that. I'm like, I can. Like break I, a sweat. I can enjoy myself more on stage and get into it. Yeah, hundred percent. And be I, and be silly, like goof around. You were so goofy in this last one in the I best was fun. way. I was having fun on that. It one. very made me laugh out loud when you picked a piece of lint off your. <laughs> I was like, You're right like, at the beginning, tell the cast. All right. But it was so, like, it was, it, it, I love moments where you see the 10,000 hours mm -hmm. when you see how long someone's been doing something because it was, like, so fluid and smooth. Like, he was doing this, like, mm -hmm. like well-crafted joke and was like, I have to get this lint off my pants because I can't look like shit for this special. Yeah. <laughs> it was just, like, so, and then went right back into it. I I'm so glad you left that in because it shows, like, how long you've been doing this and how hard you work it's like it, it's like being able to hang out like no matter what happens in the room being able to play off of it i know we're in the heyday of like crowd work comedy which people do it well yeah there are people that do it well but i mean I, the same thing that's been said it's a great way to put out a clip of yourself it's not burning material i do material that's yeah that's what i got yeah yeah I'm, it's it's a different way to do things yeah and i see that that's successful but i'm not gonna forcefully do crowd work <laughs> just to get a clip i i i feel that bubble will burst soon. Well, now people show up 
yelling. I mean, we've now encouraged the audience to, to yell at us. I would really, I will look into the camera, please. That is not <laughs> what we want you to do. You're not helping. You're not helping. No, uh, people dress to be on camera now. Everyone's wearing like cowgirl hats with like, like uh, everyone's like, oh, I'm going to be on camera. Yeah, what, this isn't the price is right. Just <laughs> sit there and laugh at the joke. If I want to talk to you, then I'll talk to you. But it's not, it's not like, well, you come on down. You're going to play Plinko. I don't give a shit. I'm glad you're there. I don't even make eye contact. I look at the lights on purpose. So if you see me looking in the audience, it's because I've been staring at the lights long enough that I can't see anybody. And it looks like I'm engaging, yeah. but I've actually seared my corneas. Like, like, if I actually like dealt with the fact that there were human beings watching mm -hmm. me, I wouldn't be able to say any of this. But, like. Any, no matter who I look at, no matter how well the show's going, if I, the one person I'm like, I'm doing pretty good. Let's go. It's one dude just always. Uh, like I'm the worst. Always. Nobody's ever been worse at comedy than me. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll quit now. I'll quit now. I'll leave now. Um, I'll would you say that you have non-work related hobbies? I'm in the market for one. That's all I have. <laughs> outside. You play guitar. Yeah, but not good. But what is the I play music I play music I do everything I do I do poorly and it's the most refreshing thing in the world Ooh. because I care about stand up so much and I mm. care about the quality of that which means I can be bad at all these other things and just do them for fun cuz I'm not a competitive person like I didn't grow up like well, I'm going to do something I'm going to do it well I grew up like I'm going to try this thing for a little while and spend too much money on a hobby that You just made me realize something I am so competitive and hard yeah. on myself that's why i can't do a hobby because i can't be bad at it it's i it makes me mad i hate myself well i'm the person at game night that's like time and i'm just like <laughs> uh you okay bitch and i mean I'm there's like, there's a level of success uh, uh, uh discrepancy here as to, that <laughs> shows up. that does show shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up i hate you i don't even have the one tv with my face on it for my podcast i, I zoom from the basement for mine but. a little bit of a case for parents that didn't love you but all right. <laughs> oh mine loved me a whole bunch <laughs> god damn them but you do play guitar <laughs> like what else do you no, do I, I have like a whole room of just instruments that i, I suck at all of them and it's it rules like the hot so I got the house, which is such a relatable premise in 2024. <laughs> uh, it's fun to do jokes about your house in Portland to people that are taking a break from throwing trash cans through Starbucks windows to come see the show. Uh, <laughs> It's like I didn't say I started my own space program. It's a fucking I'm in my mid mid to late forties. I think it's okay that I did this. <laughs> Everybody's like, like class trader, elitist, yeah, yeah. Ass, Hollywood asshole. I did, I got booed doing it. Like, boo. I'm like, what? I thought we hated landlords. So I'm not doing a landlord thing. I hate me for this. What do you want? Renting is throwing money away. Yeah. I can't win. <laughs> so I have one room it's it, that is just I got drums and guitars, and I just go from each one. Like it's 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 the apartment that Tom Hanks has from Big. From Big. Yeah. <laughs> I got too many mountain bikes. I bad at I'm bad on one of them, but now each of them are for different scenarios where I'm like, well, I'm gonna be bad on this kind of trail. I'm gonna be bad on this kind of... <laughs> I did, I got yeah. So I I do I do bike ride when I can. Uh I like I like to just make stupid sounds with instruments. Not good. <laughs> that nobody's ever gonna hear them. Right. But that's that's like the best night for me is to just have a couple beers and Try and learn some ACDC songs, tabs. I can't read music, but just sit and down there. And... Your gal. Where's your gal in all this? She's watching. She's somewhere with earplugs in. <laughs> <laughs> she, no, she, so yeah, we're splitting time. So, uh, we'll be, yeah, she'll be in LA primarily. I'll be in Oregon some of the time because she's back here in the mix. But she also, <clears throat> she'll put her headphones on and do whatever. She'll go off, go roller skating or something. We're both like, pandemic was awesome she roller skates yeah do i have to like do i have to like are people fun like when i hear i'm just... all we that's all we did was have fun during a pandemic i know it, i'm not that doesn't sound great but that sounds great i lost my <clears> mind <throat> yeah there was nights like i'm playing bad guitar she's like roller skating in the living room with a beer in her hand i'm like what are we, we're just doing it this is kind of what are we, we're, we're not supposed to be doing anything else <laughs> You've been Shelter for... in place? No, no problem. <laughs> been, well, been training for this my whole life. Yeah. Ten years mm -hmm. you've been together? Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to be this person. Just <laughs> Okay, <cu> all right. <laughs> just curious why not get married. Because I think at ten years you're already 
domestic partners. Because, yeah, because if you get married the first time, then you got to get married a second time, and it starts off this whole mess. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think part of your success in the relationship is the fact that you didn't get married? And put like pressure on it or spend yeah, money on so. it? Yeah, I think so. I think we were both like, we'll threaten each other. We'll fucking get married. Okay, all right, calm down. Calm down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think both of us saw it as like, I, I don't know what the... I just don't. I, I. I. I mean, this is a. This is a terrible metaphor that I've used before. It's like you're in a room with a door on it, and you can't leave the room. All right. But I like the room. Love the room. It's okay. my favorite room. All right. Now we're gonna put a lock on the door. Well, now I'm all I'm gonna do is think about shit. What's on the other side of that door? Now, the other, there's a lock on it. I can't get out. Like that's me telling. You know what's on the other side of that I door? Feel, what's that? Butts. <laughs> yeah, but there's a there's a butt in the room too. There's one butt. Yeah. It's a good butt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the key. Uh, great ass. Yeah, I, no, I just, I, I don't. It's not like I'm I not know. trying to be like all punk rock. Like, man, what kind of institution do you know? About? I'm just, <laughs> I, I just didn't. It did. Well, like, we're both kind of like, well, look at us. We're still doing the thing. It's actually that's so. Wild. <laughs> it's so cool. I just feel like for some reason it, it looks really cool on you. I'm just trying to think about this because I just feel like as a woman, once you turn like 40, saying boyfriend is a little rough. Yeah, I uh, I've been I take to saying the missus. The missus is good, which I think is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a little, cute. Little tip of the hat, missus is at home. I yeah, say yeah. my dude, but that's kind of like I don't know. I don't think is that like calling a guy a chick, like the version of chick. I don't know, which I don't mind. I think it's hot. I mean, dudes aren't bad. I, I'm not like oh, that's my chick. I'm not the guy who can say that. that's my chick, my lady, my lady friend. <laughs> <laughs> it's a partner <laughs> no, Like, so what the, do you call misses. women? I think that's all. We, like, I was with it's somebody. Like gals a lot. Gal lassies. Your hat. It feels. This has big uh, Irish lassie. I'm energy. not from the 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Do? I just got here on a boat. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I was. Um, Where do you keep your madams? <laughs> I was seeing someone who uh, would come home from work, and he was like, "Well, um, there was this young lady in the office today, and we were talking about." It, and I was like, mm -hmm. "Just say." Young is weird to like put an adjective in front of it. That's bumping me a little bit. How old was this guy that was saying it? I mean, if he's 37? 24, that is a weird thing. <laughs> yeah, 37. Because then I'm like, I'm just thinking about like, how young was she? And he's like, oh, like 25. And I'm like, well, you could just say woman at that, right? Or girl? I don't know. I've, I don't I've, have an answer. Young lady sounds more polite than lady. But young. So there's this lady. You, that's never the start of a good story. So there's this lady, and she's real nice. No, but like, oh, it's just young lady. It's true. It usually means it's going to be a complimentary tale. Ladies like tell you to turn your music down and call the cops on you for sure. Yeah, I mean, young lady a... though, it's weird to do math on someone's age and bring it into the description. Well, it's 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 just younger than him. But why does that matter in the story? Because maybe it's uh, he's talking about how. See, this is why he was I'm, surprised she did stuff for herself or something. This is know. why I'm single, because I get stuck on <laughs> formalities and I can't drop it. This is a young lady at the office. She opened the door for herself. <laughs> that, was kind of, that was flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what to do in the face of that. Liberation stuff's going pretty quiet. <laughs> um, I'm obsessed with your special. It's well, called thanks. Dirt Nap. Yeah. Out. Dirt Nap, named after R.I.P. Cat. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm, you, a, I'm a cat guy. Are you gonna get <laughs> so, a new so, one? No, if it's it's cats are just out there. That's, just like that whole story, the cat just started living with us. So I I one time tried to rescue a cat. Yeah. Twice I tried to rescue cats that were outside. Like climb in your mouth and that, <laughs> to eat your soul. One of them I got in the middle of the night. I drove in L.A. There's coyotes everywhere. I see a coyote, yeah. and then I keep driving half a mile. I see a cat. And I'm like, oh my. God, this is wild. Mm -hmm. I gotta stop. I gotta get this cat. Super like furry, like the long hair cats, you know? Oh, yeah. I go out, yeah. pick it up, put it in it's the a car. Bobcat. Pick it up, Bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, put it in my car, take it to the vet. I'm like, we need to find its owner and da da da. And let's rescue this cat, whatever. Give it, call the owner. Uh, mm. I guess the cat had been taken to different vets every night that week because people saw the cat outside. Apparently, when they're ready to die, they just leave. To go uh, die, yeah, yeah. And so the owner was like, "She's trying to die. Can you please stop picking her up?" And I was like, 
No, I can't. No, I'm not. Just Janice, gonna... somebody found the goddamn cat again. <laughs> she's like, it cost. You have to kill it ourselves. She said. <laughs> he said. She says it cost me four hundred dollars every time because then I have to go to the vet. It's been there overnight. Like we need to stop picking it up. And then the next night I saw it, I was like, I'm not leaving this here. <laughs> and then we went back to the vet. And I was like, I'll split this with you, but I'm not gonna just like yeah. no drive by your cat. No, yeah, it's like... I can't. Now that I know that that's the story. I'm like, that's the uh, story. Hey, you're a psycho. <laughs> and but she's like, give it the dignity of its own experience to go out and die and I was like I don't get that <laughs> I don't get how this relationship works it's it's also very heavy metal and then I get, time to die I'm off to the woods <laughs> like what yeah and then there was a cat on another yeah. street of mine see it outside bring in the cat whole thing I'm like this three days later I'm like okay I'm posting this on Instagram mm. someone come rescue this cat I've been fostering it put it on Instagram Put it up. Two hours later, knock on my door. The neighbor's like, did you just try to get my cat adopted out? And I'm like, <laughs> wait, so your cat's just outside all the time? Like, and, and for three days, you didn't, like, ask anyone where it was? Yeah, that's, that's what cats do. Are they supposed to be domesticated? I feel like it's up to we're them. abusing them by bringing them into uh, the that's, That was the whole situation. It's, it's totally like, here's a pet door. <laughs> you do make your own hours. You know, it's a real work from home situation. Like... All right. You know, every podcast we're like we're sponsored by Simply Safe. We just set it up to point at the pet door. We didn't knew, we didn't set up any of the home alarms, but we knew when the cat was coming and going like a trail cam. We'd wake up in the middle of the night, oh she's in the house. <laughs> like we got real excited. I mean, cats used to be worshipped like in like they would right put cats in like mummies, like tombs oh, and yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, in ancient Egypt and everything. They would mummify them. I mean, my theory is that like you know, dudes get all hard-ons about dogs and whatever. And I but I think it's a, it's such a control thing. Like, oh, the, you you show off your dog because of how much it listens to you. Like, oh, great, you <laughs> feed it. Scare an animal. <laughs> yeah, you scare an animal and make it afraid enough to listen to you otherwise it won't eat. That's not cool to me at all. You know? That that does the this is Sit, do this. Like, oh, what a fun, obedient <laughs> thing that doesn't think for itself. Like, that's not love. That's not. This is why you're not getting married. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't want, I don't want that kind of same thing. You know, the cat's like, what's going? Hey, I mean, everybody's done the dogs versus cats joke, but that's what's awesome about it. Where's the cat? I don't know. It took off the other day. <laughs> it's out there whoring around. <laughs> Come back when it knows what's good for it. And that, yeah. So that's what I. I've always had cats growing up, and they were always just outdoor cats that they'd come back after like getting in a fight, and you're like, "Should we give it a beer?" I think we should give it a beer. It looks like it earned a beer. <laughs> it looks like it wants a beer. That's what you want after a fight. And so, yeah, that, that most of that special is a forty-five minute story about moving to the suburbs. It's incredible. It's incredible. Well, well, thanks. It really made me want to have a relationship with a cat, and that is hard to do. Um, okay, I want to say your tour date's real quick because you're going to be in Rochester, New York at the Carlson, mm -hmm. Comedy at Carlson, mm -hmm. January 25th and 27th, February 23rd and 24th. You're going to be at Funny Bone in Omaha. I love that club. Mm -hmm. March 1st through 3rd. I'm so dyslexic. That, it's amazing. <laughs> I just did that. March 1st through 3rd, Helium Comedy Club in Philly. Yeah. Let's go. March 14th through 16th, Comedy Club of Kansas City. I haven't done that one. I think it's a newer one. Newer one, I think yeah. it sounds like, because I think it was Kansas City. What was the other one? I think it was an improv there. Yes, that's true. Yeah. March 22 to 24, Laugh Shop Comedy Club in Calgary, Canada. Yeah, I kind of have a relationship with Calgary. Wow. I had a whole story on. Well, I had a whole story on another special where I, I was trying to go to Calgary to do shows, and I got turned around because I had a DUI on my record. So they they kicked oh, me out of Calgary. Shit. So I shit all over Calgary. <laughs> And now I'm going back there to make amends. It's been years. Come on. We're in the water under the bridge. I yes. have that with uh, Oxnard. Oh, really? They mm -hmm. kicked you out of Oxnard? It's a long story. It's, I tell it almost <laughs> That's every It's right over there. I don't know how they kicked you out. We keep cutting it out every week. We tell oh, really? It, we tell <laughs> it every episode and then cut it out. Why so are we I'm, cutting it out? Let's let it rip. Come on. It involves like gangs. It's like, it's. Oh, really? Uh -huh. well, just don't I, say the name of the gangs. I don't. I have to like go apologize. Like, I have to like go on the morning news and like talk to the mayor. It's like, oh, it's, wait, really? Yeah. I don't want to like. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I don't this is like, like the old west. I don't, I don't want to like put you at risk. Like it's apparently mm -hmm. it's a problem. I would like to hear this, whether it's on the show or not. <laughs> yeah. I would, before I leave, I'd like to know the story. Before. Yeah, I tell it every okay. episode. And I'm like, you have to cut that. Uh, so let's just not put, do this rigmarole. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time to do this, dude.
But yeah, thanks. This is a good time. Dude, you I like kill me. Thanks. Get out of town. Uh, you are so funny to me. Com- like you comedy's are the fun. Funny. I like doing it. I still like I still really, really like being a comedian. I don't understand the, the guys that are like grumpy, like oh, I'm good to them. like then quit. Don't talk about Marin like that. <laughs> I saw him at the store the other night and he was having a fun time. Yeah. And it's no. so exciting to see him like smirk and enjoy yeah, himself yeah, yeah, on stage. Yeah, yeah. Like, see? Yeah. Even these old dogs. We can turn them. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, it truly is the best. Mm-hmm. It is the best. I love being on stage now, not knowing if someone's gonna attack me. Yeah, I guess I It's like fun and dangerous again. again. Staying an underdog. (laughs) Yeah, totally. (laughs) No ominous, obvious threats to my well being right now. (laughs) Yeah. Not not big enough to stalk. I also think (laughs) it's weird, though. Sometimes stalkers latch on. That doesn't always, isn't always the case. And I can't say the person I'm about to say because then it's going to be revealed that I don't think they're famous. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) I mean, I might, I might have had stalkers and I I think they might just be my friends now. You look, I like your comedy. Really? What are you doing later? You want to go hang out? Like, like it's, I just welcome them in, you know? We're going to get along just fine. It's hard to get punched when you're hugging them. You know? Kyle Kinane, you're the funniest. Dude, you're like the funniest to me. Get out of that. I'm obsessed with you. Hold no, on. Just here, really, there goes the eye contact. We oh. were, uh, we were, I know, we were looking at the floor, watching your special, I was watching with someone. We were crying at the um, eating your cuticles, the panic snacks. Oh, man. And Blues Traveler. Like, there's yeah. always <laughs> just a reference that is just really, t- you tickle me. All right. Really tickle I'll me. I'll take it. I'm going to keep saying that till you look at me. I'll make eye contact eye. on that one. Sure. You tickle me. You've been tickled. <laughs> you look down on it. You've been tickled. <laughs> You just got tickled. Y'all been tickled. <laughs> I love you. It's the great Kyle Kinane, everybody. Thank you so much. Don't ride elephants. I end these weird. <laughs> <laughs>